What's up? Guys, this is a new set once again. And today in the news, we got AMD announcing an announcement and Intel grinding the hell out of my gears. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. In true Red Team fashion, the official Twitter account for the company just revealed that episode 3 of their Where Gaming Begins series will come out, so yeah, it's an announcement for an announcement. The tweet itself reads, on March 3rd, the journey continues for hashtag RDNA2. Join us at 11 a.m. US Eastern Time as we reveal the latest addition to AMD's Radeon RX 6000's graphics family. Clearly, they're talking about the 6700 XT and below here. We'll go for a uh, refresher of the rumored specs in a second, but did you guys see the hate that this tweet got? I mean, people are really tired of hearing about new products that will just disappear from the shelves and barely be replenished. You got tweets like, can't wait to buy more air. Will it stretch the already pretty much non-existent stock of the other 6,000 cards? Or my personal favorite, the journey where nobody can buy your product continues. You know, it's a nice callback to the tweet itself. Anyways, it's not hate towards AMD, but just the global situation in general. People are frustrated and I get it. But AMD could learn from the green team. Remember the 3060 Ti? It just appeared out of nowhere and released the next day. The 3060, it got announced with most of the info about a month ago and it's out now. There was no pre-announcement of an announcement. So yeah, red team, you can learn a little. Anyways, let's go back to AMD's announcement. We expect to see three GPUs. Technically four. There will be three 6700s, with two of them being XT models. Let me explain. In terms of core count, they're all of 40 compute units or less, so 2560 stream processors. The XT models would be equipped with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, while the 6700 would be at six gigabytes, all GDDR6. The memory would also be clocked at 16 gigahertz effective for all of the models. Now, the GPU's clock speed specifically is unknown, but you can bet that it will easily reach 2500 megahertz. It's going to be interesting to see how these models compare to the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti, specifically the Ti since, in my opinion, it's such a better deal, but we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. So why is there two XTs? Well, according to Cortex here on YouTube, one model would be power limited to 189 watts, while the other would get 230 watts. As for the 6600 XT, all we have is an ASRock filing saying that it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So what do you guys think? Do you think AMD has the chops to be able to, uh, you know, reinvigorate the gaming market and actually bring out new cards? Let me know down below. Moving on to Intel, we got Ryan Shrout, who shared a peculiar chart. So according to said chart, the upcoming 11900K from Intel will be 11% faster than the 5950X from AMD. That's amazing, right? Like eight cores versus 16 cores. The test itself is PCMark's 10 quick system drive benchmark, which basically means that PCIe Gen 4 storage performance is 11% faster for Intel systems when compared to the top of the line AMD CPU. You. Or is it? See, that's what is super frustrating to me. I have no problems with the testing methodology, even though it's a little bit weird that they used the risers for the SSDs instead of M.2 slots. But anyways, Intel here is still doing its dumb chart manipulation slash hiding things from you. It's not the entire CPU that is faster here. It's just the storage and the PCIe controller. The entire 11th gen line of CPUs has the same controller, and so do AMD's Zen 3 and Zen 2 line of CPUs. I could literally say that the 3300X, a last generation quad core CPU, despite the 11900K having eight cores, that the 3300X is only 9.91% slower at the same benchmark. The cores don't matter here. And in that chart that Intel shows, the specific CPUs don't either. It's a generational difference. The IO die is the same from Zen 2 to Zen 3, so the storage and PCIe controllers would be the same too. And Intel could have just said that the 11400F that is upcoming is 11% faster than the 5950X. It's so frustrating. Anyways, this brings me to Ryan Shroud. 
I like the guy. I'm sure the reason why he has to post these dumbass charts is because of PR and marketing over at Intel. But the fact that Intel is pushing a guy who went on to say that benchmarks are becoming increasingly inaccurate in assessing real world performance for the user, regardless of the product segment in question, that's rich. And it's not necessarily from Ryan, it's mostly from Intel. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna come here at the new studio. I'm kidding, that's not happening. Anyways, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.